around. There we go. Do there. I have to move these? Um, you can do. There's the clicker there, actually. What I'll do <coughs> is just hold that. And you use the eight arrows? It should work. I don't know why. It's not turned on. There you go. Ah. Okay. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, our next two speakers who will be speaking one after the other. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, adding DNA to your family history society. Um, now, the first speaker is Maggie Little. Now, Maggie is a member of the Ballymena North of Ireland Family History Society. And, has, and is, a, it's fair to say, a very active member yes. of that society. <laughs> Um, uh, as her day job, she is a retired police officer, and as her night job, she's a 24-7 genealogist. <laughs> now, um, Anne-Marie Cochran, on the other hand, is a uh, member of the, and a very active member of the uh, Cork Genealogical Society. And um, both of these people, uh, Anne-Marie and Maggie, will be talking about uh, how there are a variety of family history societies in Ireland um, and many of them have recently started to incorporate DNA testing as part of their society's activities. In this presentation we hear from uh, Cork and from Ballymena, Anne-Marie and Maggie and they'll be telling us how they did it, why they did it and what difference it has made to the members of their respective societies. Could you, so could you welcome our first speaker, Maggie Little, please. I turned on now. Um, I'll just unmute you. Perfect. Oh. Well, that's me now. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Maggie Little, and I'm here to represent the North of Ireland Family History Society, NIFHS for short. <laughs> um, the North of Ireland Family History Society is different from Northern Ireland because we take in the, the nine counties of Ulster. Um, so. Whilst we don't have any branches in Donegal, uh, Cavan and Monaghan at the moment, um, we have uh, branches in Londonderry, Antrim, Down, Tyrone and Armagh and Fermanagh. Well, we don't, don't actually have Fermanagh anymore, but, um, but with several in, in, in each county. It's not Brexit, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they got out before Brexit. <laughs> um, so yes, we were founded in 1979, and there's the 11 branches that we have at the moment. Um, myself, I belong to the Ballymena branch, um, Belfast, Coleraine, Col Coleraine is now called the Causeway, Foyle, Killy Lay, Lorne, Lisburn, North Armagh, North Down and Ards, Newton Abbey, and <coughs> the Oma branch are now changed their name to the Tyrone branch. Um, at present, we have currently 659 associate members, but that's gone up today, so we've got a lot of members downstairs. Um, 368 branch members, but that will rise it, and has been rising steadily each month because the branch um, branches would have their uh, membership running from September to August, so that's why that's going to rise considerably in the next couple of months <coughs> when the branches send in their forms. So we normally uh, have around 1,100 members um, worldwide. The Society is a registered uh, charity recognised by Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs and we are a voluntary non-profit making organisation. Some of the, this is only some of the benefits of actually joining uh, our society would be that uh, you get uh, North Irish Roots, um, they have journals that are issued twice a year. This is one of, I've given each one of you, it's the old type of journal. We now, uh, we've gone up in the world and we're colour coordinated and glossy and nice. So, um, you have free access to online JSTOR, Ireland, 
collection of many digitised journals that are online, so you get membership of that. You have free access to the Society's well-stocked research library, which we have in Newton Abbey in Belfast. Um, it's open uh, every Tuesday from 2pm to 8, and uh, I'm one of the volunteers along with Sandra and Kathleen. We would go there on Tuesdays and, and help members of the public for, indeed, you don't have to be a a member of the society for to come in and we would to give you help. Um, we offer a look up service for associate members who can't get to the resource centre and that's any, everything that includes transcriptions, books, journals, directories, maps and a, a lot more. And you also have the opportunity to attend any monthly branch meeting or indeed the mall if you wanted to. So um, why did we uh, create the FTDNA project? Well, in the Ballymena branch, we had we had muted about the, the DNA, and uh, in 2014, uh, probably 2013, we contacted Morris here, and he, he came along to the Ballymena branch, um, but it was open to uh, everyone, and um, gave us a talk on just the basic, basic DNA, and there were kits there. So at that, there was over about 120 people came uh, to that talk, and there was at least 50 took the test on that night. And then once we got the results, we were just hooked um, with this. So uh, we encourage and support the use of DNA testing to further our gene genealogical research. Uh, among our members and um, our DNA results can be discussed via the NIFHS Facebook groups. Several of the branches have groups um, and pages but within the groups then that uh, you can you can discuss things and more often than not that that's where we're actually we talk about is DNA this and DNA that. DNA results can be discussed say, by, by the Facebook groups and at the Society's regular branch meetings and we now run a Family Finder course um, three, four times a year and they're very well attended. Um, we also then have the last Saturday of the month in our resource centre we have a, a for autosomal DNA, um, it's just a get together where we literally talk and help each other out and just see how far we've got on with that. Um, our members are also encouraged to join the other relevant projects within uh, DNA, the specific surname projects, the relevant Hollywood projects, geographic projects, the Ulster Heritage Project. And the main, one of the main reasons for us is we, we want to connect with the Ulster descendants in the diaspora and help locate their family still in, uh, still in Ulster. Some of the facts with regards to our group, um, the majority of our Y-DNA members belong to the R1B y Hala group, so it's very difficult at this point to see uh, any clear patterns with regard to that. Um, the YSTR groups, R1B Rospra and R1B McCracken, there are family genetic STR patterns um, that are becoming evident now with, with those. Uh, we have 364 members now in the NIFHS project and we promote the use of DNA testing, particularly the autosomal DNA test. And I think that's because within the family history, um, certainly me and a lot of others, it's the one we find the easiest. <laughs> but it's the one that gives you so many fantastic results. Um, so to date, out of 364, 202 of our members have actually taken the autosomal test. <coughs> so basically, thank you for uh, taking the time to come to this presentation today. And I would welcome you down, if you're hopefully coming uh, tomorrow, Sunday, <coughs> I would welcome you down into our stand at B3. Um, and if you want to find out more about the society or indeed our project, thank you. Great, thanks very much, Maggie. And I said, stay there for, don't go away because okay. we will be coming yes, back sure. to you for a Q&A shortly um, and I already have a few questions that I want to put to you but we will be talking to Anne-Marie 
uh, Anne Marie Coughlin now, and Anne Marie will be telling us um, about her experiences adding DNA to the Cork Genealogical Society. So, Anne Marie, if you want to come up, we will uh, put your slides up here. Can I work from the mouse then? Uh, you can work yeah. for the mouse indeed, yeah. And what I'll do is I'll just give you this for now and put the. Well, if you hold that, <laughs> and then I will take this <laughs> and take that. Can you take it off, sir? Grant. Perfect. <coughs> Thank you very much. And put you on there like that. Yeah. So you're ready to go. Is that comfortable enough? I think so. Can you hear me okay? If you talk a bit, talk bit louder, a bit louder yep. yeah. <laughs> and that just goes into your pocket. If you have one, or hook it onto your. Uh, yeah. If you, you won't be moving around, so let's just leave it you there, shall so. we? <laughs> we'll leave it there. Okay. Grand. Okay. You're all good to go. And there's the clicker if you want, or you can just so advance just it the using the, the, or the, uh, for the yeah. forward, forward and back. That's fine. Okay. I'll leave it there. Cool. Once, once we've worked out what we could do. Fine. Okay. Right. Um, as uh, Maurice has introduced me, Amory Coughlin, or Amory Colin, if, uh, if I'm down at home. Um, big argument with my granddad and my dad, which way, which way it should be, and my granddad was Church of Ireland, so of course it was Colin, because it was Bosher. Um, so um, I, work, uh, I work at Gold Genealogical Society, it's more like a lifestyle than a, um, a leisure pursuit, and I also manage the social media for them as well. And uh, I try and keep off the Twitter because it's completely addictive, but I do go on occasionally. Mainly I run um, the uh, official Facebook group and the DNA Corky group, uh, which is private, and you have to get past me to get into it. Um, um, also, we've got the Nagel, Nagel group, I always call them the Nagels, um, Nagel group, who are sticklers for information and accuracy. So they're talking to each other, and everybody's got um, a relative called either Richard or Garrett. So, you know. They're happy enough together, so that they've got their own group, and we've just recently taken over the Nagel um, One Name Project as well. And we've got 50 members already, and we've got a lot of links with Northern France. So that was a bit, bit, bit of a surprise to me anyway. Um, but that's, that's part of, of what we do. So this is us. That's us. Right, so my, my first thing is, why bother? Okay, why bother uh, partnering a DNA project with a family history society? First of all, you're knocking at an open door. Okay, um, we're all working with DNA. We're all volunteers sitting here, probably. I don't think many of us are getting paid for this. Um, and the uh, family history societies have got a, um, a, a background of volunteers. People who are keen on what they do. So if you want someone to run your project, go and visit the Family History Society and there'll be some person who will look slightly interested and get the job. Um, I am not a scientist. Um, anybody who hears about me doing DNA laughs because um, science and I don't match quite naturally at all. But uh, I am very, very interested in relationships and how people connect and where people come from. And uh, so I wouldn't be, I'd be interested in the why as far as it goes. I need to know more about it myself. Uh, but again, as Maggie said, with the autosomal, women can get involved. Um, we, we have an investment in the autosomal. And I'm very interested in the chromosome matching as well. Uh, so volunteers, we bring a lot to it. We've got outside skills other than the straight academic. So we've got a, we will have a different slant on what it means to research our own DNA. And it's a tool. So we use it as we need it. Okay. Um, so local expertise, you would be stunned if you came down to Cork, probably the same as Ballymena. If you throw a name out into a conversation, somebody will have you placed and related within about five minutes. Everybody's connected, and this is what we're finding with the DNA. The oral memory is very strong in Cork too. And um, we have a, 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 a tremendous amount of local expertise. <coughs> And contacts, contacts in Cork, uh, it's scary actually, um, people who know people. And local specialists, we have a lot of local specialists too. Uh, the good, I think one of the main points about having your local history society and DNA is the fact that with DNA, your international members can become more active in your society. And every time we have a committee meeting, it's what can we do for the internationals, you know, because we do so much locally. And this is one area where they can really take 100% um, ownership of being 
someone from Cork Heritage. And a lot of the people that I'm, I'm uh, I should say working with, because I do actually, <laughs> I live the job. Um, uh, people I work with are actually, they are living all over the world. Um, I've just been given the walk for at half past four this afternoon by one of our um, co colleagues, shall I say. I tell him what I, I need to tell you. And uh, she's in, um, where is she now? <laughs> She's in the south of, of the US at the moment. Um, so the international perspective for DNA is just mind-blowing. Um, possibility, once you've got the, the internationals involved, the possibility of them coming back and connecting with their own extended family is, is again, just incredible. People looking, I mean, our matches are actually pre-famine. Uh, you know, the hunger, the great, the great you know, exodus. Um, those are where our matches are coming in. Um, so we've got a discrete group of people in Cork who know their history, they've got real trees, they've done their traditional research, they know who their people are, people who are coming to them in DNA matching are getting a very good deal. They're actually getting a very accurate um, uh, feedback, if you like, from the society. Um, the other thing is that you're drawing people into the society and the society is getting more and more mem membership and more investment. So that's the reason why you should do it. Oh, we are. Right, this is us. Now, I put the top one in because I thought you might like it. Um, the society was um, established by two people. Somebody's got the joke already. <laughs> uh, it was established by two people. Wendy, Wendy Quirk, who is actually uh, a sister for the um, Latter-day Saints, and a gentleman called Declan Chalmers, who was totally obsessed by his own tree and has just um, done a, a limited run of his own pedigree, um, six copies, and it's like that, and that's just been produced. Uh, so the two of them got together, and they decided that court needed its own genealogical society. So the, pr the, the, the purpose was to promote the study of genealogy as a leisure pursuit. Now, you know the rest of us. <laughs> well, you know, that was where it started. The rest of us, you know, the, we would say, we would argue it was a leisure pursuit. It was definitely um, interesting. So we have 60-40 local international membership. We meet twice a month in the Family Records Centre in Cork. We're one of the three, I think, people, three locations in Ireland. We've got a Family Records Centre. And we have a library there as well, so, uh, which people offer, donate, give, acquire books. And we've got a phenomenal amount of records. Um, so we meet twice a month there. One is for the meeting, and um, because of our international membership, it's now on video. So it's videoed, tidied up, by um, our local um, uh, filmmaker called Tim McCoy, who comes in and does it, and uh, puts it. When then we put it online onto our website. Uh, second meeting is the one that I'm more involved in. Is the drop-in workshop. So you sit there with your computer and your books and John Grenham's find your Irish ancestors and you wait for them to come through the door. So um, that's, that, that is very, very popular and we do have actually have queues for people to do that. Um, it's also giving um, a lot of the folks who have trained, um, they've done the course at UCC, the diploma in genealogy, it's giving them a chance to flex their muscles a little bit and to try out new ideas <coughs> and to help people. Um, the Facebook and Twitter I do for them and we have a journal uh, we were having a journal every year, but we've now putting everything on the members' website, and we have a biennial conference every two years, and we've just had one in the spring, uh, which was shared with the IGRS, who flew south for the day, and uh, celebrated their 80th, um, 80th years in, in existence. Um, the, the, the big secret, unless you're actually in the society, you won't know about this, but we've actually got an offline database which we are loading onto a hard disk <gasps> and it's only three of us have actually got the password. This is, this is Declan Chalmers' I, um, brainchild and anything that's sent in to us, trees or um, information or databases, is going on this hard drive <laughs> and only two people will have access to it. So you've got to send in your queries. Um, you'll get lookups done for you, but it's completely private. Um, the, the purpose was to protect any material that's been sent in by members and to honour that privacy. Um, we are very proactive in linking with other local and international family history societies, and we have uh, we share their newsletters. What's going on there? And it's now a meeting place for court DNA research. Right. So um, we are very lucky. Um, in the fact that we've actually got 
a genetic genealogist on our doorstep. And she has been um, giving us an annual presentation for a many number of years on how to do with DNA and what it means. And it's Margaret O'Shea Jordan. Not only has she been helping us out, she's actually, she was, I think, one of the first project leaders uh, for Family Tree DNA in YDNA, Ireland YDNA surnames. And so the, 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 the society is unique in the fact it's actually, DNA has been part of our DNA, if you like, for five or six years. Um, so she's been, she's been actually mentoring us, minding us and helping us all the way through. And she's been absolutely marvellous with me for the work that, I, the stuff that I've been doing. She's been there for me and she's been on the other end of a Facebook message whenever I needed it. Okay. Um, so she's, um, as I say, she's got the y, Island Wide DNA Project. Now all these, these um, websites are all together on our website, so don't worry about copying them down because we've got them. Um, she runs her own O'Shea project. Now, again, first one of the first ladies to actually incorporate autosomal into a, a surname project. And she's been, fired, the last two years, she's been fine-tuning extended family testing as well. Again, I think one of the first genetic genealogists in Ireland to do it. So she is, she's, she's following her own path, but she's really, really ahead uh, of what's going on. This is the one that sold it to me, Team Munster Irish. Elizabeth O'Donoghue, Ross Finbar, O'Mahony and Nigel McCarthy. I saw them 2013 here in this very room and I was blown away with the fact what, what YDNA could do. Uh, Finbar O'Mahony, this, was the, this is the gentleman who, <laughs> when I got my results back, I emailed him and said, how do I get my kit retested? This is the wrong kit. <laughs> I've got the wrong results. So he talked me down and said, no, they are yours, I'm afraid, but um, you weren't, probably weren't expecting what you've got. Um, so again, Finbar is um, a court man living in Dublin. Um, he runs his own family surname project, so he's very, got a very heavy investment in extended family. And the O'Mahonies, if, you, if you're an O'Mahony, you would know Finbar. The Hartner are his mother's side, he's working with them. Um, this is where we all Jenny Fleck, Nigel McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> he's ours. <laughs> You've got of him. <laughs> um, he has. Um, he, he's, he's leading a leading geneticist. Absolutely, streets ahead of the rest of us. We can only sit and just stand in amazement at what he's doing. And um, when I put my head over the parapet and said, "Well, I'm doing DNA," at the end of the meeting, the, this. Gen about six gentlemen gravitated towards me and said, we're in the McCarthy project and they all looked identical. It was just hysterical. <laughs> they all, they've all got the same nose, you know. It's just, um, and he's working very, very strongly with our local McCarthy's. I mean, just, they all know Nigel. Nigel knows them. Um, Nigel, I'll, I'll let you into a sequel. Nigel has now sorted out the McCarthy's into Hapler groups and he's giving back Hapler groups to other surnames. <laughs> okay. So that if you have got um, if you've got um, uh, a surname in West Court, you might be hearing from him. He's actually sorted it out. Um, Susan Beretta. Now Susan has been beavering away in West Court, as you probably know. She is just doing phenomenal work. That's her website, courtgen.org, and her husband is the other part of the team. Now she, w I, I was hearing, I, I was talking to her like you do on, on uh, Facebook, and I said, would you come and give me a hand with the Cork Island project? So she's come on as co-admin, and then she's been, it's, it's been like a go in a sweet shop. She's, she's been loading the MTDNA onto Cork Island website, onto our Cork Island project website. Okay. And I was, she's a lady who's been giving me, what, four, half past four this afternoon. Um, the public genealogy, she's got loads of stuff on there, even if you're not Cork. Um, she's got um, handouts, she's got uh, trees that you can, fill, you, know, you can print up and fill in. Um, her, her initial interest is why the YDNA West Cork surname projects, and again they're all loaded on our website, um, and she's done she's put them on for me. But what she was doing in the summer was she's fine tuning her, ex, her extended family, and she was um, she's been going and testing um, on autosomal awful lot of autosomal. She's she's been you know cornering people in pubs and all sorts. And then she's also been um, working on her extended maternal line in West Cork, which again is another first. Um, she's, got, she's getting a profile now on maternal DNA. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, Ma now, Martha, I've not had much contact with her, but that, that's one of the projects, the Cork Lee project. Um, West Cork again. What she's, it's, it's connected to one of the annals, one of the pedigrees that was written 
um, uh, technically should have been 1400 but was written up in 1800 and she's not got any promises on this whatsoever if your surname fits in that you can join but she's not guaranteeing that you're going to actually be related and then the, the Owen Act, um, they're just an amazing group. They're um, quite a young group, actually, um, I think could do with a bit of flagging up. And that, again, that's to do with the ancient, uh, the ancient annals and pedigrees. Right, now, this is my tribute to Dan Bradley. <laughs> my map. <laughs> um, I got this idea from the blood of the Irish, which is uh, it's, uh, probably it's not spoken about in DNA circles, but I, I loved it, the programme with Derma Gavin. If you turn a map round and look where Cork is, all of a sudden you've got another perspective on what's going on in Ireland. Okay, we all, we, I, have I got a little mouse? I haven't. Um, everybody knows where Cork is, don't you? Yep. Uh, possibly Kerry as well might be of interest to you. Where those shipping links are, where are they? The Iceland, um, I'll talk about the, the, the local links in a minute. Um, Northern, uh, Northern France. The uh, Iberian Peninsula, North Africa, that is a natural trade route. And what I'd say to you is, what DNA does is it turns things on its head. And we're so used to seeing a map the right way around, because you email me back so you've got your map the wrong way around. There are no right way around and wrong way around with DNA or with maps. If you turn something on its head, you will get a different perspective. And um, if, if you look at that, and all of a sudden, we're not connected to Europe anymore, are we? We're out in the ocean doing our own thing. And this is what the early Irish were doing. This is what was going on. It only took six days to leave Galicia to end up on the Cork mainland. On, on the, um, you'd end up in West Cork from Galicia, six days in a sailboat, pre-everything. Pre Nothing. I mean, if you're looking at a trade route, you know, you might just pop over to Cork, drop, drop a bit of uh, jewellery over and come back, you know. I mean, you've got to, it, it, it just, you need to really look. Well, I, I, I was just blown away with this. Looking at actually the logistics of this, that we're not, we are in Ireland, but we're in Ireland in the middle of water and where we can go. And if you go for, you know, the, the next stop the other way is, uh, is uh, Canada and, and Australia. Not Australia, US, sorry. Australia's next. Right, so this is Cork. This is where we are. Anybody didn't know where we are. Now, if you actually look at the coastline, we've more coast than we have land in Cork. Okay? It's a nightmare for the, um, for the customs. Every, time, every beach you go on, there's a little sign saying, if you see anybody unauthorised on this beach, please contact the guard. You know, there's no way you can police it. You know, people are dropping in and out of that coastline 24-7, even nowadays. The north of the county is covered, uh, is surrounded by um, mountains and, and hills. Difficult to get out of Cork unless you're actually going by water. Um, the trade link, there's a, there's a false border with Waterford, um, and also I think with Tipperary as well, definitely with Kerry. There's a definite a false nightmare border if you're looking for um, parish records in, in West Cork, because the Kerry border zips in and out of there. Um, so, you know, we, we have to look at what our people are doing and how they're, how they're using the land because those um, administrative borders are false borders, especially for Cork. Now, the closest trade ring with Yawl, and I haven't got a little pointer, but it's actually in the far... Yeah, right, I, am, I had trouble getting it on the map, actually. Yeah, we're just at the bottom of the Blackwater. Uh, we had a lot of movement. With, there was um, uh, a Viking settlement on that corner there. The trade link with Yawl is Bristol. Okay. That's where the trade link is. It took 24 hours to travel to Bristol by sail pre steam That's that that was, and it took I think two and a half days to go travel by water to Dublin. So where are the links? The Bristol, um, Cork. Um, the closest link with Cork is Swansea, Swansea and uh, and uh, the Pembroke coast. If you if you've ever been to Swansea and listened to the market, you might be in Cork. The accent's very similar, the food's very similar too as well. Um, so the land versus water thing, that we, we are as a, as a county, we look out, we don't look in. Um, trade, as I said, Bristol, uh, the butter market, we were supplying um, ships for the, the British military right up to independence. Um, we were supplying the Caribbean with, um, with, with food. 
and we were supplied the, the US links are without, we, you know, we would automatically say, yep, the US next stop. We were also the holding place for the transportees to Australia. So uh, anybody who was transported, whether they were political or otherwise, went to Spike Island, which is off off the, uh, the, the coast at Cove. And there is actually Spike Island in Bristol, a little island called Spike Island in Bristol. Um, the uh, US and Caribbean, Caribbean, I was, this is what got me going, ICARA uh, project, um, the Cork clan leaders went out of Cork City to Barbados at the end of the Willemite Wars, whole lot. They weren't killed, they were transported. Um, I met a gentleman called Carver O'Sullivan from Barbados at the Exodus Conference. Um, how many years is that? down the line. It's very, very strong links with the Caribbean. There are also Irish um, slave owners, it's been proved, and we also know from the DNA that they were um, the middle management were Irish as well. Um, so th there's a very strong link there with the with Caribbean. I've called it the mainland, um, the quickest place across. If uh, during the hunger, if you'd done money, you could get out of Ireland by going to England. That was the cheapest way across. And the boat is I think it was only four hours even then. Um, there's no, um, there's no, uh, well, there wasn't any dust duty or customs. Well, how long that's going to last, I don't know. But um, uh, you know, you could go, you can free travel between the two. So there will be a lot of Irish people, and there are of Irish heritage in England whose DNA will come up as Irish. Okay, so. Um, I could talk on this ride because I'm fascinated with it. Um, the Peter Robinson project I went to Canada. They were North uh, North Cork, and they're all logged, and so um, we do get we get a lot of contact from them. The immigration, the Cumberiners, the Munster plantation, um, the Desmond Rebellion, all got the land all got given back to the crew. Well, it was taken back by Queen Elizabeth and given out again. A lot of the people settled. Tudor, the Tudor settlements can be checked through um, the Book of Survey and Distribution. And the Cromwellian Plantation, they came and they liked it and they settled. There are a lot of Cromwellian families and we've actually got somebody um, logging them at the, moment, at the moment and I said call them Puritans because we don't like Cromwell in, in court very much. Um, so we might be looking at Puritan families. Uh, the soldiers and sailors, um, Kinsale was the... Um, the, the main base for the British military up to recently, up to, up to the War of Independence. And uh, also we have barracks in Cork and Vermoy. The sailors, I've got my list of sailors, because obviously the, the, um, the border, as you can see, is all water. Here's my list. Um, we have the Blackamoors in Cork City from the 1600s. Uh, we have, um, where are we? Let me get my list. Uh, we've got the Blackmoors, we have got um, the Huguenots, big settlement of Huguenots in Cork. Um, we have the tin miners at the Vera, they, they moved around a lot and they turned up in, they've turned up in Butte as well. The Vikings, now the Vikings, we, we have got the known settlements on the, on the um, as I say, in York and in Cork City. Um, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the other, um, we've got mercenaries. Um, staying in Kinsale, they were based in Kinsale in the 18th century. So we've got Germans in there as well. And I've met somebody who's actually German, court descent, um, who put me onto it. Um, so looking at that, you know, it, there's an awful lot of coming and going going on. Um, the other one, the unlikely ones, the West Cork pirates. They're my next. That when I've got five minutes, I love these. They're brilliant. Um, the West Cork pirates, technically the old Riscals, but what happened was James the first. Um, took away the pirating license and he wouldn't let them go and, and settle back in Devon. So they all decamped over to West Cork and they were using um, the West Cork um, fr freeway, if you like, down and they were settling. Um, Algeria was their winter residence. Um, these were all Devon people. So these Devon names are sticking out and there's been a lot of research done on them. And the last one I've just found out about were. Um, the Lombardy princes were settled in York because um, Edward II owed them money, so they, they actually moved into York for a while. So, there we go. This is us. I'll leave that where it is, and I'll just quickly go through what we've found so far. Um, the um, Cork Island one, we've got about 200 
people in there. I just quickly got off the top of my head what it is because I've been out of time. Um, Susan's been feeding in the mtDNA and it's coming out very strongly as H. A couple of mixes but H. Um, the Y DNA is very interesting. We've got a lot of R, but not many RM269. But only about a third. Um, and that, that, that's uh, the R's are the main ones. Uh, DNA core key is the one that we're using for the autosomal, and we link that with GEDmatch. And that's the one that's through, throwing up all the interesting uh, matches. Uh, we're getting an awful lot of matches at fourth and fifth cousin. Everybody who's in there, we've got at least 200 kits in there. Everyone's got someone to match, which is scary when you think about it. And um, the fourth cousin um, problem we're getting because of the, um, so shall we say, the concentration of families, there's only, um, we're probably matching on two or three lines, so we're actually probably we're having to go further back into our generations to see what, what, uh, where the matches are. <coughs> uh, pedigree collapse is a big one as well for East Cork. Um, cloyne diocese are known for their um, consanguine entries, um, so that's a big, big problem. But when the parish registers came out, all of a sudden people were very happy. Um, so those are the latest outcomes, and this is what's happening in the um, society. We're getting a growing membership involvement in DNA. Um, we've, I've just had somebody test today. He's mapped one particular surname in the whole of Cork and he's decided to go for a big wide test today. So he, that's where he's done today. Um, so that's going to be coming back. We've got mainly, mainly the autosomal, but anybody who started doing the Y is really taking on to it. And I've got somebody else who's actually doing a one name study in, in his surname, and that's taken in him into Wales and uh, all over the world. Um, our specialists, I've, I've, I've outlined our specialists, they're, take, they're leading what we're doing. They're advising us and they're directing us. We're using online support an awful lot. Where that's how we communicate. Uh, the monthly workshops with the DNA. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the monthly workshops, uh, as I've spoken about, with the DNA uh, get-togethers, with um, people who just taking from it what they need. I've got, so, I've got a group of them that have found out they're related, and they're micro researching individuals. Uh, which is very, very, you know, nitpicking, but that's what they're into. And then I've got people doing broad stuff like well-known studies. Um, we have annual events where Mar Margaret comes and talks, and as I say, Susan came in the summer and fed back on her results. And um, we do an awful lot of networking, and the buzz around it is just phenomenal. Um, so that is us. So thank you very much, and good luck with your own research. No, keep, keep that on, yeah. um, I'm going to push this back to the previous one, and Maggie, um, come out and join us as well. Um, how many people in the audience are actually a member of a family history society in Ireland? Okay, so there's a lot of people here from Bellamina. Anybody outside of Bellamina or Cork? Anybody who's in, which one are, you're in Clare Roos, of course, and you're in? Northern Ireland Family History, the Ballymena branch, or the no, I'm associate member, possibly of yes. Of the, are you an associate of the actual I'm an society? Associate. I'm an associate. Yes. Associate. Yeah. And Jill, Kerry, Kerry Family History Society, because I I don't think there's that many family history societies in Ireland because you guys are completely voluntary, aren't you? You know, yes. it's not like the um, Roots Ireland or the Family History Centres. Mm which are commercial concerns working with the parish records, where you guys are completely voluntary. Do you get funding from anywhere? Not that I'm aware of. We, we <laughs> would like to get funding, uh, certainly for NIFHS we would, but um, we just make it ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, do, do different things to try and raise funds. Uh, what, what kind of things do you do? Um, well, I suppose I was really sort of put in charge of a, like a little subgroup um, of the council, uh, to look at ways of of trying to raise money, and one of which was last year was we did a a, a fireside quiz, um, selling for one pound, and just mm -hmm. went out round all sent it to all the branches, and then they sent the money in, and we actually had or were given FTDNA kit um, for a first prize, so that's how we try and get 
some money in. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good time to mention the, uh, the competition that you're running downstairs. Yes, uh, definitely. <laughs> Again, we have been given another uh, family tree DNA autosomal kit, um, and we're charging one euro, and all we need is a name and an email address, and that will be um, drawn on Sunday after the show. So you might win one. <laughs> so go downstairs to the Bellamy in the north of Ireland Family History Society stand. Straight downstairs. You don't actually have to walk very far. B3. <laughs> there will be somebody there to take your money. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne-Marie, do you get any funding from anywhere? Uh, we have a very... Oh, should be should be on, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a very, very good uh, team on the committee who can seem to magic money out from places. And we've also got um, the local council, county council and city, city council, very interested in what we do. So there's a, there, we're, usually, we're usually at the top of the list for funding for that as well. Okay. So Questions from the audience yeah. then, um, because I'm just wondering how many people uh, in Kerry and in Clare, I know Clare has a very strong DNA component to the society. Does Kerry, Jill? I'm, I'm not aware of, of it, but then... That could be me. Okay, okay. I haven't heard anything either. And anybody else? Any other family history? Because there's not that many voluntary family history societies in Ireland, are there? IGRS. Sh but, it, but in terms of a county um, family history society, uh, GSI is kind of D Dunleary and Ireland. Um, Kerry is really just Kerry, but. Southeast Galway. Southeast Galway, okay. South East Galway we have an active society. I don't, I, I, I don't, I'm not well up on it, but I, I have heard them do talks and organise things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and is there anything that I'm just interested in, in hearing from, from Paddy and from um, <coughs> the other people who are in family history societies, is there anything in, in the presentation that you think you can take away and maybe bring to your own societies in terms of, uh, well, you really run a special interest group. Yes for a DNA special interest yeah. group. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm quite quite um, interested in the, the, the monthly workshops. They they tend to work extremely well? Yes, very well. Um, Mark McDowell would run our um, autosomal uh, family finder uh, courses and so he, he runs our special interest group last Saturday of the month mm -hmm. um, and very well attended. And uh, any questions from the audience? Yeah, we have a question here. First of all, I'd like to ask you where, how you fit into this. Um, <laughs> well, he was invited over to Northern Ireland for, uh, for I, her. I, uh, I um, started doing genealogy about 10 years ago and then found DNA and gave it to my dad as a Christmas present, uh, hoping that he was my biological father. And, <laughs> he was, uh, and then just got hooked on the whole thing. So I've just been kind of... Uh, uh, a bit like Gerard, being evangelical and not addicted to genealogy and genetic genealogy for the last eight years or so. And um, uh, Maggie was kind enough to invite me up to do a talk on DNA right. many years ago. And we had about 50 people um, doing Ten, DNA tests on, the, on that on evening. So yeah. we, we moved 50 tests in three hours. I mm -hmm. think I lost a half a stone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, uh, my son has, has had the uh, Y DNA test. I'm, uh, I'm actually researching my husband's family, who's from County Derry, so that's why I, I'm a member of the NIFHS. And I must say, I'm very, I've been a member for six or seven years, I would say, and I'm very pleased with uh, what I have found out in unexpected ways uh, from through the NI. Uh, so I got right, yes. yes. Uh, but I want to ask, if I were um, starting out today, what test would you recommend to me? I mean, there are three. There's the male and, and the Y-DNA, the female, and then there's the autosomal. Could you just give me some feedback on that? Well, I, would, I personally would recommend the autosomal, uh, the autosomal test, the family finder. Uh, that's the one that interests our members the most because it gives them a new lease of life. Basically, these brick walls that they hit and the, they don't know where to turn for, for their ancestors. The family finder actually finds living relatives. And it's, uh, what, what I see happening is the ones that emigrated way back, 
they were the record holders and that and then they're now coming back to us yeah. and that's how we're getting the records and that's how um, relationships are being forged network 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 uh, last one from uh, uh, firstly for the monster team <coughs> and we have to sponsor a test if you find um, the current donor of Clam and Silver Bear, the direct okay. descendant. Easy. Uh, yeah. He, he is <laughs> right. he is so, um, I believe he's living in London, but right. I believe it's the monster group we should uh, offer, but I do so we have to sponsor it. And for Fermanagh, if you find a corker in Fermanagh, okay. I'd be happy to sponsor because that's where they originate. Thank you. Thank right. you. Okay. Two free tests, I like it already. <laughs> So I'm going to come over this way, John. And if you I'll come over this way. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay. There you go. Um, I'm, I'm from Canada, uh, and from Ottawa, and um, these days, to answer that, that question over there, um, I'm recommending that anybody who starts out in genealogy these days should be taking one over so much. Yes. yes. Because it's as basic as talking to your family mm -hmm. and finding documents that are uh, that are. Family attics and basements. Um, uh, for Cork, you put on the on YouTube a, um, a presentation by I think it was Bros McCutcheon, was it? I should. <laughs> 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 which, which was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> DNA, it was what, the Deans or something? Registry Records. It was wonderful. Please put more of your presentations yeah, on they, YouTube. Yeah. If, you, um, if you join the Society, it's 20 I, euros yeah, a year, you can go into <laughs> and We've got three lots of, of uh, presentations in there you can but work I, your way I, through. Yeah, I, I have to say that coming from Canada and listening to these two presentations here, um, I, I wish you could be a little more proactive in getting out information to societies in Canada, and probably in the US, in, Aus in Australia. You know, people, uh, organizations that publish newsletters and things are usually desperate for information. And a well-written article talking about your society and what it has to offer to people in other countries, I'm sure would be very well received. You could Thank write you. it once and probably have it published in a number of places. Thank you. Well, I, I, I could actually uh, follow up on that. Uh, I had a, a, a girl that um, just, I had never met her before until uh, June of this year uh, and the beginning of July. And she came from Ottawa. Um, we met up Facebook, all the old, um, uh, um, social media. Social, uh, yeah, yeah. D different genealogy sites that oh. you can go into forums mm -hmm. and things. Yeah. Uh, and she came over to Northern Ireland, but she went back with the NIFHS leaflets <laughs> because, um, I mean, that's what I, I push our society. Yeah. So, um, well, hopefully this is the start of something and we'll yeah. take on board what you've said. And Could I just say that some of our... Uh, I was a membership secretary for the Northern Ireland Family History Society for many years. Escaped this year, <laughs> and 24 years of volunteering. But we have very strong links with a lot of the other family history societies in Canada and Australia, and uh, they receive our journal and they receive our e newsletters twice a year, and uh, so they would be aware of all these developments. Right. And of course, now you're on YouTube, so you're going to be seen by thousands of people <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> so we have to uh, stop it there because it is six o'clock. Um, but uh, thank you all, all for attending the first day's lecture in Genetic Genealogy Ireland. And a very big thank you to Anne Marie and to Maggie for thank a wonderful you. presentation. Thank you. I forgot to do about the deep heritage. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
You, did you survived. You survived. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, that was brilliant. That was really, really good. Um, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to turn off the recording. We're, we're still recording it, just so that you know that all of that is on YouTube now. So.